2014 Prius. Just came from a body shop. Customer complains, does not work. The air conditioning. So here are the symptoms. Uh, right now I do not have my valve depressed, so I'm not reading anything. Actually, I'm, I am reading the low side, and it's going through to both are open. So this is act the actual low side. So if you listen, you can hear the um, fans engaging and disengaging off and on, off and on. And every time the fans engage and disengage, you could see the pressure lower as the compressor attempts to turn on and it does a partial spin so it lowers the pressure and then it goes back up. And you can't pick it up with the phone camera down here at the compressor but I can hear the slight engagement, a little click of the compressor and then immediate click of disengagement. You can hear the blower fan. Actually, maybe I'll turn down the blower fan to get rid of that mode noise. Let's turn down our fan. That'll get rid of some of that noise. Yeah, you can't, you can't hear it. I could feel it on the lines. When you place your fingers on the line, I can actually feel the engagement of the compressor and the disengagement, even though your ears can't pick it up. That's why you, God gave you these tools right here. This is your most valuable tool. This and what's between your ears. Okay, so with my experience, I go, okay, it's overcharged. So let me show you something. Close this off. And we'll close this off. This is how critical the charge is on these new vehicles with low charges. So right now, I'm going to turn down the hose so we could read the high side. So this hose is empty right now. Well, it's not empty. It has 50 PSI of vapor. Now listen. Use your ears. What do you hear? The compressor is on and staying on. The fans are on and staying on. All I did was open this valve. This is now filled with liquid refrigerant. Just the overfilling of the quantity of this hose was enough to get the compressor to come on. That little tiny amount overcharged. So there we are. We're down to 29, 150. Oh, let me turn the fan speed to put a load back on it. Because we got no load. Okay. So, we got a load over it. Now that we have a lot of air going over the evaporator, you can see the pressure going up there, but it's running. So just that little bit of putting refrigerant in, we're going back into the cycle because I have such a heavy load of door open, bringing in fresh air. So to get the load off the system, it'll still be overcharged, but it'll run. If I turn the fan back down, I take a load off the system. I'm not adding heat to the evaporator. By not adding heat, the refrigerant pressures will go down. Let's see, let's watch them go down. See, it's going down. Now we're gonna, at the borderline, let me put it on recycle. But we know it's recharged. But you see what a big difference, just by filling up the hose will do so to show you to even a fuller extent of how little refrigerant will make a big difference I got it too low 
I will open up the recharge hose and I'll fill up the recharge hose. Yeah, let's set this sucker under the load. Let's just go for the gas though. I see this. This is a daily. I put these are my daily schedule, basically. They're almost like taking your daily coffee. I get a daily body shop car screw up. Okay, so what I I just did here was I opened up the refrigerant charge hose. So I just released more refrigerant from the system through the hose, through my manifold and into this hose. So now I have two hoses filled with liquid refrigerant. So I roughly have two ounces of liquid refrigerant removed from the system. You can hear the compressor. I hope the camera can pick up that uh, sound. But here we go. We now have a running system. We're holding at 37 steady. We have 189. We can see the temperature suction line is coming down a little bit. The temperature of our liquid line. Uh, ODB is outdoor dry bulb. So that's just the temperature right here because I don't have the thinister. Usually I have the thinister and I put it down in front of the condenser to take the temperature of the air entering the condenser. But I'm not doing that right now. I'm going after another problem. So we have a subcooling of 51. Way overcharged. Don't look at the superheat because we're on an expansion valve system. If this was an orifice tube, you use superheat. If it's expansion valve, you use subcooling. So now we have... I have a steady flow of air constantly running. I have a compressor constantly running. I have the fan on inside and we can now see SLT a suction line. So the temperature of this suction line right now is 62 degrees and the liquid line right here attached to the liquid line is 81 degrees and if you move your liquid line clamp over to the discharge line before it goes into the condenser you usually have a 50 degree or less difference in temperature. If you have more than 50 degrees or less, there's a problem. That's in the, covered under another video. Okay, that's it for now. I'll discharge and recharge this vehicle correctly and we'll see what the difference is. Take note of, say, our suction line temperature and our liquid line temperature. And we'll come back.